Hello and welcome back to The Basement. In this episode, we are finally going to put some color on this 1973 Fender P bass. But before I do, I've got to touch up some work here and level sand this. So, back in the last episode, I shot five coats of sanding sealer on this guitar body. And I was hoping that was going to fill in a couple of little tiny scratches that I made. Uh, with a file when I was widening out this pickup cavity for the bridge pickup just ever so slightly so it would fit in and out a little bit more smoothly and well the sanding sealer wasn't thick enough to fill it so I decided to put a couple of drops of super glue on it let it harden up uh, before I block sanded. While I was at it I realized I forgot to fill in these two pick guard holes that were drilled for the non-original shaped pick guard. Now it's not going to be seen technically the new pick guard is going to cover it up but I knew that was going to bug me, that that was there, so I decided to put some super glue on that too. So now I've got to kind of touch up sand that with a little heavier grit to get through the super glue and get it level before I start block sanding. Block sand everything with 400 grit, and then uh, I'll probably, hopefully I'll be able to get three more coats of sanding sealer on this body tonight before I start shooting the base color of Olympic white, followed by Sherwood green and a whole mess of lacquer. But at least in this episode, I want to get through to the Sherwood green. So let's get after it. Lots of sanding to come. Let's fast forward through that boring stuff. things to remember about super glue is it's harder than the wood itself so it tends to sand at a slower pace so I was trying to be very 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 careful and just sand the super glue off but I ended up getting around that area and causing a low spot around the super glue repair so you saw me get frustrated and just take some 220 to it just to level those areas out and then come back with 400 which is fine I fully anticipated having to respray the sealer on this guitar so I'm fine with that I also took off some hard edges that I didn't notice just around here on the bottom, on this back side near the control plate, and then this edge on the, the horn. That just comes from level sanding it a little too much. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased. It didn't take much leveling, just a little bit of orange peel removal, and uh, we're good to go now. So I'm going to wipe this thing down with some naphtha, and we'll get to spraying the rest of this can of sanding sealer. Hopefully I can get at least three coats out of it. And then uh, once that cures, Within 30 minutes, I'll start spraying some one white. One little trip when working with nitro, especially on sealer, because it's a thick, thick, thick product, is your spray nozzles, they will clog. So what I do is I take the cap, and I fill it full of naphtha, which is lacquer thinner. And whenever I'm done spraying the coat, I'll take the nozzle off and I'll soak it in the naphtha so that it thins that lacquer and hopefully present, prevents it from clogging up. So that's what we're doing. I only have maybe one more coat, maybe a half a coat left of sanding sealer in this can. 
So I'm gonna concentrate it on the top part where I sanded through the sanding sealer originally. I think the rest of the body is in great shape. So I'm gonna concentrate the rest of that can on that one, those spots where I sanded through the sealer. And then it'll be time finally for some Olympic white and some Sherwood green. So let me catch you up to where we're at right now. Um, shot two coats of Olympic white on the base, and I noticed that the grain was still showing. So I was like, okay, no problem. I expect to see all the imperfections when you start putting the first couple layers of color on. But that's where things start going downhill. I should have just started to wet sand. Hopefully you can see this. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera. I'm gonna start with the spots that I couldn't really get because they were too close to the neck pocket. And let's see how good a job I can do. Again, I don't wanna to go too far because then I start doing more damage than good. I already see I'm scraping off the tail edge of that, but it is, it is helping. And it's definitely gonna go faster than 400 grit sandpaper. See there, I went too far. Okay, so I'm done with the scraper. I definitely went and took a lot more than I wanted to, but I felt like it would be easier to blend this, feather this in with sanding sealer after I block sand all of this. I'm pretty well resigned to the fact that most of this, these first two coats of Olympic white base coat are gonna come off and that's fine. I want the Olympic white to settle into the low spots. I'll hit with sanding sealer again. Like I said, probably run an entire can of sanding sealer. And then I've got probably two thirds of a can more of Olympic white Put that on, the rest of that will probably be four coats maybe, maybe five. That'll allow me to block sand again. Um, and then I've got a whole another can of Olympic White on order to kind of cover that back up if I go too far and get down into the sanding sealer again. Hopefully by then I will have a glassy smooth surface at 400 grit to which to spray the Sherwood Green Metallic. So I don't know if we're gonna to get to, to the color coat in this particular episode, hopefully we will, but I at least wanna get up to the point where we're ready to put that on. So hopefully my extra can of sanding sealer and Olympic white will be here tomorrow. So I can get this body prepped and ready for that step. Shoot that, depending upon how much block sanding I have to do and how much time I have to do it. We may get some Sherwood green on it in this episode after all, but we can only hope. So fingers crossed. Now it's time to do lots and lots of block sanding.
Okay, so it's the next day. This thing is completely 100% air dried. I've got the handle bolted back on. Now it's time to just to wipe it down with a little bit of naphtha. As you can see, I've got my emergency can of Olympic white and a spare can of sanding sealer ready to go. So it's time to start over. I think it'll go good this time. Not that it didn't the first time, I just was expecting it to go better. and wasn't expecting to have to sand this much off. Fortunately, I only took the sanding sealer off in like two or three spots and it's very, very small spots. So I think it's gonna feather together pretty well. I've got four or five coats of sanding sealer back on the guitar. You can already see some issues with some low spots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish off this can of Olympic White. And at least I'm gonna do four coats of Olympic White. I think I've got more than that available in this can. I'm gonna do four coats of Olympic White. I'm gonna wet sand again. Hopefully I don't have to use any more sanding sealer. If so, I've probably got about two or three coats left in the can that I sprayed last night. And I've got a whole fresh can of Olympic White if I need to use it. So I'm fairly certain I can get everything leveled and get the grain filled. The grain may be filled already, but these areas that I was working, probably gonna have to be level sanded again. So the white will help me to see that way better than this finish that's on here right now. So let's get the spray. Okay, so it's the next evening. I've got about four or five more coats of, I think four coats at least, of the Olympic White. And now what I need to do is I need to kind of level sand this. The, I'm really, really happy with the, the grain. It seems nice and sealed. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of issues here. There's a spot on the back where there was a knot in the body that I can still see and where I over scraped there's a spot right here but I think we can get that just by by block sanding I'm not worried about the extra epoxy that I kind of took off it's starting to fill in um, by the time I get a bunch of clear on it it should be fine but I don't want to screw with it because it's underneath the pit guard and at this point I think I'll be doing more damage than good trying to throw more super glue on it. So I don't want to go the super glue route again. Just want to block sand, get everything nice and smooth and flat, 
Um, I've got a little bit of sealer left in that can, so I'll probably hit it with the sealer again uh, after I block sand this. And then I will hit it with the Olympic white yet again. And at that point, I don't think I'll block sand it again unless it absolutely has a ton of orange peel. And if that's the case, then I'll block sand it again real briefly, and then it'll be time for the Sherwood Green Metallic. Yes, I am somewhat tempted to leave it the Olympic white and uh, put the black pearl pickguard on here. But I really do want to see that, uh, that Sherwood Green. I've actually never seen that paint in person. But it looks good on uh, Adam Clayton's signature base, so I think it'll look good on this as well. So let's get after it. Okay, I'm back down in the shop and I'm pretty happy with how this body is turning out so far. Um, I think I need to do one more round of wet sanding before we start even thinking about putting the final color on. However, I gotta say man, this Olympic white, I'm kinda tempted to leave it this color. Um, it wouldn't hurt my feelings to have this be a white base. It looks really good. Other than some sheen differences, it's hard to tell where the epoxy is. Um, I think this is I think this is really really good. All of uh, the scraping and sanding mistakes from earlier, for the most part, have been filled in. That's why I want to do one more round of wet sanding to level it back down, and also to address any any little tiny inconsistencies that I might have in the surface finish. Um, before we go to the final color. There's a little bit of orange peel going on, nothing too terrible. Um, all in all, I'm really very, very pleased with how this is turning out. Uh, headstock looks great. So let's go ahead and zip off this handle and we'll get to start sanding here. All right, so I love this masking tape and super glue trick, uh, putting it to the pad and then super gluing the masking tape to masking tape inside the neck pocket, rather than solely rely on just the friction fit from the screws, because this is, this is not a tight fit in the neck pocket, so there's no strength to be had by having a tight neck joint and having the screws just pulling it and squeezing it together. It's solely on the threads of these screws. So not having all the weight, and especially with me twisting it, by the handle holding the weight on these screws was not something I wanted to do, especially with an old vintage instrument like this. 
So that masking tape and super glue is just giving much better contact surface and holding the it holds it's been holding the base really really secure so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it i'll continue to do that throughout the rest of the painting so let's uh before i start that sanding i want to see how much this bridge pickup pocket has shrunk by the many coats of sealer and base coat of the olympic white see if it still goes in and out or if i have some filing work to do because i'd rather do it now than after i put the sherwood green metallic on here and potentially end up scuffing that finish. So let's go ahead and do that now. never had a fender with a matching headstock so this will be kind of cool but man -wee. I'm really tempted to leave this Olympic white with this pearl black pit guard I think this would look awesome but I think I'm gonna stick with plan a which is a Sherwood green metallic I can always make another P base if I need to make another P base to get this look So I'm pretty happy with how everything's turning out so far. I'm gonna let everything dry overnight. We'll come back during the day tomorrow because I've got some time off. What I'll do is I will shoot some more Olympic white. I'm not gonna mess with the sealer. I don't think it needs it. Um, there's no bare wood. So I'm just gonna shoot maybe one, two coats of Olympic white, potentially just finish off the can. Then it's time to actually start laying the final color on here. All right, so welcome back to the garage. I'm going to actually get started on finishing the last couple of coats of the Olympic white base coat before I start shooting the Sherwood Green Metallic. So I want to wipe this thing down with some naphtha, then I'm going to start spraying some Olympic white.
right, so we're back in the basement. I've got this Fender P base body in the vise. I've got the headstock in my hand. And initial impressions, having never seen this color in person or at least known what color it was when I was looking at it, it's a whole lot lighter and more blue green than I ever expected it to be. I'm not saying that I'm disappointed with it, it's just not what I expected. So I'm gonna have to kind of come to grips with this. I'm kind of liking the Olympic white color a little bit better, but I think this is gonna grow on me. I, I do feel like this base, it was intended to be green. Um, I had kind of more of an em less emerald green and more of a, a bright vivid green, kind of like what you would find on a, on a Music Man Stingray, but that's not a, original color for this year or vintage of bass so i decided to stay close to the original um, or at least uh, something that would have been possible to get this bass in in 1973. so i went with a fender color again it's a lot more blue than i expected it to be uh, it is very very cool though i think it's going to darken up once i um, block sand this down shoot a couple more coats of sherwood green metallic and then go straight into clear from there I think it's going to darken up again a little bit once I put uh, some some clear coat over this, especially when it gets to a polish to a high gloss. Because I've got shoot, I've got four cans of clear if I need it. Planning on only using two, but we'll have, we'll just have to see. But let's take a look at what this will look like mocked up with I don't know with the pick guard that's going to go on this, and maybe even the headstock decal. So I'm gonna let it sit in the vise just like that to kind of off gas overnight before I start wet sanding. Um, the reason why I feel like I have to wet sand is because I can see <clears throat> in person, it's not gonna show up on camera, but in person I can see where it transitions from one chunk of wood to another. So there is three distinct pieces of wood that make up this body. There's the top wing here, there's a middle section, and there's a bottom wing here. I can't really see, at least on the back, I can't see the transition to my plug on the lower horn. Uh, I can kind of, well, I take that back. I can kind of see it a little bit. If you want to accentuate any flaws, use a metallic flake paint is what I was told because if any slight elevation change is going to show up at the, basically because of the way the metal flake reflects light. If it's at a slightly different angle, you're gonna see it. So if this was a matte finish or a, just a regular finish without metallic flake in it, it would be a whole lot easier to hide those things. But I like the metallic flake. I think it looks good. From a distance, you're not gonna see it. On camera, you're probably not gonna see it. So I'm not really that worried about it. But I am gonna level sand this again uh, before I, start doing clear. So I'm going to wet sand this to get that splotch off. I'll try and pick that up here in just a second. But um, yeah, so far I think this is going to be a beautiful looking base. Uh, again, it's not quite the color that I was expecting, but I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it's going to be awesome. So let's take a look at it. All right, so I've got a silver outline fender logo, solid precision base. Uh, water slide decal it's going to go on the headstock um, something about like right about there I, i'm guessing i didn't get the contour body one um didn't think it needed it but here is the pit guard i had envisioned with this so i, I love pearl white pit guards for some reason they're just kind of my thing I like the black pearl too, if I would have gone with the Olympic white, I think that would have looked awesome. But I think it's gonna look pretty sharp once it's done. So I've gotta smooth out some of the irregularities. I can still see a dip in where I over sanded. I'm not gonna be able to fix that at this point. I'd have to take it down to bare wood and fill it again. And I'm just not willing to do that right now. Um, I think once the pickup is in there and I get all the clear up that I'm going to put on to this guitar on it, it's going to be very, very minimal. But I can already see I'm going to have to do some filing work to get this to fit a little bit more smoothly. Because once I get the conductive tape in there, that's going to be problematic. But ultimately, I think it definitely looks better than it did when I first started. Um, for sure. 
All right, so thank you so much for following this build project so far. I know I started this thing back in June and to just now be putting the first coats of the final color on here three months later almost is uh, a little ridiculous. Um, again, I'm learning as I go. So there's been a lot of obstacles to overcome with this build to get to this point, but I certainly appreciate your patience and in, in following along to get here. I'm fairly confident I'm going to be happy with this color. Again, it feels a little bit more te too teal to my eye, but I think it's going to darken up when I put the clear coat on top of this. So I've got three stages of painting left to go on this. I'm going to wet sand this down, get it leveled, just to knock off any high spots that I'm able to see now that the metallic flake is on here. Because if there's any kind of topography to the finish whatsoever, the slightest angle shift is going to be picked up by the, the angle that the metal flake is reflecting light. So I can see a couple areas of opportunity. So I'm going to take it down to the Olympic white where it needs to be and then shoot it with three or four more coats of Sherwood Green Metallic. Then I am going to leave it. I'm going to let it off gas for a day, do one can of clear, wet sand it again, do the final can of clear. So that'll be the final stage where I can start polishing it. And I've got to be very, very patient with that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to redo it again. But I have a couple of backup cans of clear in case a mistake happens. So I feel like I'm in good shape there. Uh, the only thing that's left to do at that point, once the finish is done, is to strip all the black spray paint off of the hardware, which is going to be loads of fun. I can't wait to get started on that. But I've got uh, some paint stripper, and I feel like it's going to go pretty quick and pretty easy. At least that's my hope. And then we've got final assembly to include wiring. So we'll save the, the, the wiring till we get to the very end. If you remember episode one, when I laid out parts, you kind of already know what I'm doing, but uh, I may have a surprise. I may not, I don't know. I'm still kind of deciding. I may do something special with uh, the two pickups set up, uh, but we'll see. So at least two more episodes coming, unless there's a problem, in which case there will be more. So hopefully we'll get this done in two more episodes. I feel pretty confident that we can. Um, yeah, we'll finish up painting. We'll get the hardware stripped. We'll get wiring and final assembly. And I'll probably do one more episode just to tie everything up in a bow, show the full edit, obviously extremely time reduced in a proper demo in uh, that third video. So. Thank you so much for your patience in following this build. I can't wait to see you on the next episode down here in the basement.